How well can Perplexity code? And yes, that's what we're going to try today. We are going to be using the brand new Perplexity Labs feature and put it on our standard coding test that we do with all the different large language models. And we're gonna see the output that it gives us. So just a few days ago, Perplexity put out an update called Perplexity Labs. And I did a whole video about how it is really good at deep research, like vastly better than Gemini, ChatGPT, Grok, and all the other deep research tools. It is phenomenal. But also this deep research tool can code. So I thought what better way to do this than do our standard coding test that we do with all the different large language models, but let's just add perplexity to the mix. So if you're unaware, we have the website franklina.com and it is completely free. There's tools, news, videos, prompts. There's even a newsletter, one email per week, no spam ever. But the important thing here is at the bottom, there's something called code test. So we have all these different prompts that we use for different models. So if we picked Angry Birds, for example, we can actually see the prompt here. We can see the code that each model has given us. So for Angry Birds, we've only have two because it is relatively new to the repertoire, to the arsenal that we use. And then if we hit preview, we can actually see the actual code for each model that it came out with. So we are on perplexity. We're clicking this little icon here and we're going to insert our first prompt, which is for Angry Birds. But before we do that, I wanna remind you to click the subscribe button. It is completely free to cover AI on a daily basis. So you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest AI while we're waiting for it to generate, let's look at the competition. So this is Claude 4, which came out last month. And we can hit play, we can select a level. And if I remember correctly, we have the little bird, but he doesn't really shoot. So this one is a little bit buggy. Uh, the Gemini Pro one is really good though. So we have a level selection. There's the number of birds here in the top left. And we can also fling the bird. We can see we drop down to two birds and now we can complete the level. We can go to level select. We can play through all 10 levels. It worked really well. How does perplexity match up? Well, let's see what theirs looked like here. We have a tab here for app and I'm going to show you the app first and then we will move on to the rest of this game, which is pretty cool. So we have instructions and it pops up instructions with little emojis. I think it did a pretty good job for how to play and then we can hit start game. These levels are locked. We cannot click these levels because we have to complete level one. So let's try it. I think graphically this looks pretty good. We have, we have our lives up here in the top left. So we dropped a life and we have this little slingshot with a direction of where they will end up. And I like that they actually stay on the level themselves and it says no more birds, try again. But the thing is, is this level is not actually playable. You can't beat this level. We can never move on to see if there's any other levels because it won't go back. Like the, the physics is wrong, it's off. So it is better than the Claude one, but slightly worse than the Gemini one that was a full-fledged functional Angry Birds game. And this thing creates all its own assets. And in this case here, it creates the index style and app.js file. We can see labs and we can see everything that it has done. And it goes through, it gets all this different information from different websites. It shows you where it got the information from, which is actually really cool. So it is still kind of doing stuff. It's still showing us, hey, these are all the things that's going on. It just wants to pop up the game here. It says single file. This is the important thing here, single file. So if we hit download code, it creates a zip file with a bunch of different files within the zip. So we can see here, there are three different files, not one. So now on the website, if you go to code, here is the perplexity code because it has been added. So we can see a history over time about how these models code all these different prompts and we're gonna build a nice little repository. We're going to do the Sonic test next. So here is our prompt for Sonic. Here is the code for Claude and we have Gemini Pro, Gemini Flash, and we can kind of see what they have done. So this is Claude and we can see what Claude looks like. You can't really die. You can jump, you can go collect these little coins, but that's pretty much all it is. We have, we have Gemini Pro, which made this really impressive game here. There are rings that you have to collect. Once you collect all the rings, you win. And if you fall off the map, you just kind of come back. So kind of a really cool game. And then we have Gemini Flash, which is this version here, which is not that great, but 
you kind of go to the end and that's it. There's some rings, not much you can do. Let's see what perplexity does. I have already entered in the prompt here and it has completed and I've done this for all the upcoming games just to save a little bit of time, but we can see labs here and we can hit play again. There's nothing really to do here. It just says level complete. You've collected zero rings, so it is not playable, but I wanna show you what it has come back with. So it came with a whole research about Sonic 1 and implementation, and it did all this research about Sonic to make a game that doesn't work. But they came up with all the sprites and everything else. I was really interested in this game working because it just doesn't. We have the assets and we have all of it here. And then we have some tasks based off, this is the history that it's gone through. We have the images that it pulled and we can see all the images that it pulled just to try to figure out what it's making. And then it even pulled up some videos and some sources. So it did a lot of research for this and I'm going to quickly download the app here. I'm gonna download this zip file and then I'm going to do some quick modification to see where the error is and I'm gonna get this working so you guys can see it. So we're gonna fix the problem, honestly, by just deleting some of the elements that it has. So we're just gonna delete the game over screen and here we go, we have our little Sonic game with rings. So this is what it's supposed to look like if you were to correct the code, oh great, I fell, and I just deleted the code which is the game over screen but that's pretty much what it looked like. But the failed version will be on the test instead because that is the version that it generated. And in the future, if it generates a good working version, then it'll be up here. The Sonic example was pretty bad, but the next one is absolutely mind blowing how good Perplexity coded it. So this is Subway Surfers with Cars. If you wanna see the prompt, you can see it on the website. This is what Gemini 2.5 Pro came up with. We can go back and forth and it looks like this. The car looks kind of janky the way it goes over and we can see the barriers that are upcoming eventually we can hit them game over it looks okay we have claude 4.0 sonnet and this is what it made and again it's this one's actually kind of cool i love the camera angles and what it's done it gets really hard to do this but this one's called highway rush 3d and you can kind of see what it looks like the sides of the walls are kind of janky as well over here you can kind of see how it is but Nonetheless, this is Claude 4.0 Sonnet. Now, let's look at what Perplexity made. So again, we have our labs and labs gives us like the overall, we can see the app, which is just gonna be just the app itself. We can see assets, stuff it's made. We can see tasks, we can see images. So here are the images that it has come up with based off driving games, based off different things. I don't know exactly why it's bringing up all these images, but it's doing research and it's showing you and even shows you the sources. Now, let me show you the app itself because this one is really good. So here we go. The thing I will tell you, and the controls are inversed. So it just takes me a second to like think in reverse, but the clouds are really good. I like that it's almost like a fog up ahead. If the road looked kind of a little bit further in the distance, they figured out a way to make the generation look a little bit nicer, it would be really cool. Something else I notice is that the speed increases over time. So I'm gonna hit play again. You can see the speed in the top here, it increases and maxes it at 120 and it has a high score. I think that this one looks really good. The clouds look really good. And I think for this style of game, Subway Surfers, but with cars, I think this might be the best one so far. Let me know in the comments below which of these you think is the best. All right, so things are about to get really challenging now. We're moving up a notch. Let's try a Minecraft inspired game. Just so you can see, this is Claude 4.0 Sonnet and we just kind of fall off a map. This one doesn't work. We have Gemini 2.5 Pro and there are dates with our Gemini, but you can see what this one looks like. We actually have a somewhat working world. There is another Gemini 2.5 Pro here, which is a different date. This one's absolutely incredible. Probably the best one I have had to date. And again, these are all the same prompt, one single prompt. So. You can see all the different versions here. I think those are the two best that I've had, but let's see what Perplexity came up with. So here is Perplexity. It's called Simple Craft. It has a nice little loading screen and we can kind of move around. We can jump. Uh, we can left click to place a block. We can apparently go one to six. Okay, so this works. So here is the block and I don't know exactly what's happening because it's all green, but I think for a single prompt, this is not terrible. It's 
pretty decent for a one prompt. So let's kind of dig down. Let's see what happens. How far can we dig down? Oh, look at that. We're going out of the level. Woo. All right, so there is the world above us. Pretty good for a single prompt. We can place blocks, we can pick different block styles. It has our position, our frame rates, pretty solid for perplexity. I gotta say so far, perplexity is really impressing me with its responses. It's not quite Gemini level, but it is pretty solid, especially in comparison to some of the other models out there. So pretty good so far. So let's try our last prompt, which is the absolute hardest, which is GTA. Let's just jump straight to the preview. Here's Claude, it didn't work. We have Gemini 2.5 Pro, and we have this little beam thing here, and sometimes it does spawn right, sometimes it doesn't, it just all depends. Let's see if we can get it to spawn correctly. At least that one did work. So let's just try this again real quick, and here we go. So this one works hit and miss, but at least it does work. We have a level, we have a bean, and we have Gemini 2.5 Pro. We can jump on buildings apparently. We have that skill. So Gemini 2.5 Pro at least gave us something where Claude's is always this. So perplexity. Perplexity is here. We have sources, we have images. I'd love to see what it came back with this time. Don't know what this little cube square thing is gonna help us with, but we have all these different things that it has come back with to help it create the game. And we can see the history of what it's gone through. We can see the assets of what it's creating. Don't know what this asset's for. We're about to find out. Let's see our app. It's called GTA City 3D and we have it loading. Uh, let's try to go here and let's hit view full screen and let's see what happens. Does it load? It doesn't look like it. Let's see if there's any errors. Three geometry is not a constructor. All right. Truthfully, I'd have to do too many changes to get it to work. And I could prompt perplexity back and forth to get it to correct its code, but we will never know. Hopefully they fix it in the future and we can try this test again and we'll see what GTA looks like in the future on other large language models. And if you wanna keep up to date with the latest code and how these large language models work and everything AI, don't forget to subscribe. I cover it every single day. So if there's something new in the AI world, I'll have it here, you'll see it here first. And if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to like the video, it tells the algorithm you like this content and you wanna see more of it and leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. I am absolutely blown away at how good perplexity is for coding overall. I know the prompting back and forth is a little bit slow because it's using like this extreme deep research to code. So that's partially why I didn't want to do the GTA one over again because it's like 10 minutes each time. And I could have corrected the code myself, but like I said, it gets to a point where when is it no longer perplexity's code? When does it become my code? I don't know what that threshold is. I wanna keep these tests as fair as possible. So prompt, one shot, this is what it gives you, this is what it is, does it work, does it not? Which model's the best for that type of test? So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with another AI video. AI tools, AI news. Well, you're meant to be